Hello, welcome back to the channel. I'm Petrina, this is Homegrown Florida, and we are in the midst of our 30-day challenge to spend just 15 minutes in the garden. Today, we're gonna to be talking about thinning seedlings, and I'm gonna show you exactly how to thin them in the best way possible so that the remaining seedlings survive and do well. But I'm also gonna to explain to you why we thin seedlings. It's super important. Before we jump right into it, you might be wondering what is going on here because in some of my previous videos, I say that I don't actually use the clear plastic dome. And this is true, except, <laughs> except during our rainy season. Um, and what I do is uh, because we get so much rain and because I have to start my seedlings at this time, um, I have to give them like a barrier to the rain. So I take these things, these little popsicle sticks, I think they're like craft sticks, and I place it over top. And as you can see, there is a pretty significant gap here where the air will allow to flow through. I wanted to show that to you because I know many of my viewers and many of uh, folks on some of my um, community pages on social media have been wondering like, all oh, my seeds are drowning. How do I deal with that? This is my way of dealing with it. It keeps them from getting overwatered. It keeps them from drowning and it keeps them alive and pretty happy. So I started these seedlings uh, about 15 days ago. They all pretty much germinated within about five to seven days. So they're only uh, about a week beyond their emergence from the soil. This is one good time to start thinning your seedlings. Although I would be hesitant to thin them aggressively. I always like to do two or three cycles of thinning. And why I do that is because you may pick your favorite or your best seedling, the one that looks the most healthy, and then clip off all the rest. And then that one seedling may have a downturn and doesn't do well. So I always leave at this point in time, at least two, sometimes three, if I'm having a hard time picking. <laughs> Um, then once I place them in the bed, I usually place them with two seedlings per section. And that allows it so that when they go into the bed, if one of them thrives and one of them doesn't, you have a 50% chance that one of them are going to do well and so that you don't have to restart more seeds. But once they're in the bed and they're both thriving, say they both take off and they both do well, when they get about mm, four to six inches tall, I start making my choices then as to which one I'm going to eliminate. Now, for gardeners and many gardeners, especially beginning gardeners, I had this problem. I did not want to clip any of them. If I got a seed to germinate, there is no way that I'm going to kill that baby plant. It just doesn't make sense. I agree. I understand where you're coming from. I went two years of not thinning seedlings and ended up with tiny little lettuce plants little minuscule carrots, uh, broccolis with heads about that big. I ended up with these little tiny portions and, and small yields. And I'm like, what is going on? What is my problem? I posted a picture of one of my plants and begging the, the community, the gardening community to say, hey, what, what am I doing wrong? I think I got like 100 responses that they're too close together. And so I took that to heart and I said, you know what, this next year, I am going to focus on getting them all to perfect uh, spacing. And so when it came to my squashes and my tomatoes and my lettuce, I spaced them perfectly according to what the packet said. And they all grew very large and produced a lot. So when I had those seedlings and I had four in a little you know one inch area and i allowed them to grow i got i don't know maybe a tenth of what i got from my one plant that i allowed to be its only plant in that area where i followed the spacing instructions and i realized that it's almost an oxymoron i've got to kill plants to get a bigger yield but that's it's essentially true these guys have roots and those roots don't like to compete. They don't like anything around them. They don't want to have to fight against other uh, plant roots to grow. That's why weeds are a big problem. So it is imperative that you definitely have to thin your seedlings. You do need to be giving these plants the space that they need if you wanna get the yield. 
I know many of you would be concerned about things like, you know, I have a small growing area. I don't want to give, you know, 18 inches to one plant. I totally get it, totally get it. But you do have options, right? The best option that I have been able to find is polyculture, which is where it's a, it's a type of um, permaculture, I guess. I'm not fluent in all of that language, but it is basically what it means is, is that you put deep rooted plants and tall plants right next to short plants. So a great example would be if you want a big tomato plant, it would be great to put a short rooted plant like onions, garlic, lettuce on the underside of that plant. The roots are not going to be competing because the tomato plants are going to be very far down and the roots of the onions, garlic, lettuce are all shallow roots and they're going to not compete with the tomatoes. So how do you know what plant is a shallow root plant versus a deep rooted plant? This is not a perfect rule, but a it's a general rule and my whole life is the 80% rule. If it works 80% of the time, that's what I'm gonna do and I get 80% yield, which for me is great. What I have learned is that if the spacing requirements for a plant says 12 inches or above, that is a deep rooted plant. If the plant has spacing of one to six inches, this is a shallow rooted plant. So you can intermingle the deep roots with the shallow roots. I hope that helps. If you have any questions about that, make sure to head down to the comments. So let's get right into it. I'm gonna show you exactly how I thin my seedlings and then um, I'll show you how I pick and the best ways to do this. This set of seedlings is actually from my mom's garden. I'm gonna be going over there um, in two days to put these guys in. There's a lot of things that you're gonna see in here that are not appropriate for trays, for transplanting, but I have to start them here to get them over at my mom's because I'm not over there every day to monitor seedlings as they emerge and as they germinate. So this is how I do it. So don't judge me on that. <laughs> so I'm gonna bring you in close here. Things like right here, you see these little guys? That's parsley and I put a lot in each cell for the parsley the basil here, which to me doesn't, oh yeah, okay, right here. I was gonna say that doesn't look like basil, but <laughs> the basil here, I also put several. And then I've got some Chinese cabbage here, which is a Tokyo Bekina. And then I have all of this area, which is all different kinds of romaine lettuce that my mom loves, and those I seeded heavily. So let's take a look at this parsley first. So for this parsley, what I'm gonna do is, I see here that there is, there's one right there, there's kind of one with dead leaves, but then there's one right here, there's one right here, then there's three, four, there's five. I don't need five. So the way that I like to do this is I like to look for the healthiest one. Now all these guys look pretty much the same to me with the exception of this guy right here. So I'm gonna take this guy out. And all I do is I take my very, very tiny clippers and I come right underneath this, make sure you can see that, right underneath there and I clip him. And that's all I do. But now I need to do at least I'm gonna do three more so that I'm left with just two. Now I feel like these two guys right here are a little short. So I'm gonna take them out. They also, if you notice, they're emerging from the exact same space that this bigger one is. And so they're probably competing the most. So I'm gonna cut both of those off. Now I'm down to three. And I've gotta pick between these three. And the way I like to pick when I think that they all look identical is I like to pick the one that has distance from each other so that the roots that are happening underneath um, have a little bit more space to continue to grow. So when I look at these three, I'm gonna pick the middle one because he is close to this one and he is close to that one. But if I take him out, these two have at least a little bit of distance between them. And there we have it, we have two left. 
And I couldn't have planned that any better. That is like the perfect look for them. <laughs> so let's do a couple more. So I got done with the basil. I'm gonna skip the Tokyo Beckonaut because um, there's only two per, two per cell here. And some of them are really looking like a bug is kind of chewing them up. So I'm just gonna leave them alone. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna put my sights on these lettuce. Sometimes you just have to pick. Like this one had probably six, I don't know, six or seven in it. And um, a lot of them looked really great, which is a, a challenge. But you have to pick your favorites or you just have to indeterminately pick some, which is what I'm doing at this point because I think all the rest of them look pretty good. So that's all there is to it. I have thinned them all. I have my little guild plants. You can use these as microgreens if you're into that. I just kind of toss them into an empty cell and they'll make it into the compost eventually. I'm gonna water the bottom of these guys. At this point, I don't water the top. I'll water the bottom of these guys just so they don't dry out. And they are going in their forever home in my mom's garden in just two days. As you can see, that took us no time at all. I think that was less than 10 minutes probably more like five or seven. It takes no time at all to thin your seedlings, especially if you do them in stages. We met our goal of 15 minutes in the garden today. Spending just 15 minutes in the garden, you can grow your own food.